Hello, Sword Fam. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Brittany, and today I am joined by my guest and friend, Julian Schutze. Yeah, I'm one of the founding members of the Historical Combat Collective, head of the Vancouver location. And for those that are interested in some kind of pedigree, I am educated in coaching as well as kinesiology. Today we're going to be talking about ring hilt fetters um, or ring guard fetters and some of the pros and cons and why they might be considered controversial within the HEMA community. This is a ring hilt fetter or a ring guard fetter. Basically what that means is there are rings here that have been added to the hilt. Ring hilts can be single or double sided, so you can have a ring on one side or one on either side. Um, today we have examples that are both going to be double ringed fetters. So first and foremost, if we're going to be talking about pros, the most obvious one is that this directly protects your hands from pretty much any blow that's going to come downwards. It's going to stop it right at its tracks and keep your fingies nice and safe. It allows you some variance about uh, degrees of failure depending on the angle of the sword. So the shilt will catch the blade if it's going down the edge, it'll do that job perfectly. But if your hand position is slightly off and your, the opponent's blade is coming down closer to your flat, it might not catch. However, it definitely will with the ring hilt. With the conversation in the HEMA community often circulating around the protection of hands, having hand protection that fits different folks, and the rate of injuries for hands, it seems to be a really good choice to have a fetter that actually protects the hands more than something without the rings, right? Yeah, it seems almost a straight up no-brainer, right? Well, we want to get the most protective equipment we can get for our hands because we all have jobs we got to do later. Might as well keep it as protective as possible. Mm -hmm. This seems like the most obvious, well, yes, of course. But there are some considerations we do have to think about that are not quite as obvious as going, oh, look, it protects your hands. There are some things you do have to think about when it comes to this style of modification. What do you think some of those considerations or limitations might be if you're opting for something specifically to protect your hands like a ring hilt fetter? So I kind of hinted at that before, that idea of saying, oh, well, if your hand positioning is not quite right, it's going to keep you safe anyway. That can start leading into some bad habits if it's not something that you're considering during sparring because it does let you get away with things that you wouldn't otherwise have. If I'm using a fader or I'm sparring and it doesn't have this ring hilt on it, the feedback that I messed up is immediate. I get whacked in the hands and I go, oh, <laughs> that was not good. And we've all been there. <laughs> oh, 100%. Uh, it, it's a, I like to refer to that as direct feedback. Yeah. You, you know you done goofed. Yep, you know immediately and then you can start working on fixing it. Yeah, so if you look at a lot of what people are talking about with ring hilts in terms of a discussion, one of the main points that gets brought up is that that idea that, well, you're keeping your hands safe, which might allow you to get away with what you probably shouldn't. And that's very true. But from a coaching perspective, that's, there's lots of ways you can work around that, right? Because although the feedback isn't immediate, you don't get hit in the hands, you go, oh, that was good. Yeah. But when you're training, if you review video, if you have your coach or even, you know, yourself and, you know, the sword slides down, slams into that ring hilt, you should still have someone in the back of your head going, oh, if I didn't have that ring hill, I would have had a really I, bad yeah. time there. And then that's where you can start quickly making some adjustments, right? You can have like a, a little subsect of rules and sparring and go, oh, well, if that happens, maybe I'll still count that as a point against me. Right, right. Right? So it's not as direct. There are ways of, to work around that. But the fact that you do have to find ways to work around it, do make it a, a, a con in the long run because it's not as straightforward. But there are ways around that. Right. So it's not like it's it's a write-off, it's not just a dead set, this is a con. Sure. And it's, you know, there are ways to work around it, I feel. Yeah, definitely. I think if you are one of those folks who really wants to consider the safety of their hands, this is a great option, but also not using the ring hilt to rely entirely on keeping you safe. You still want to practice in a way that is sound and safe with your motions instead of just always relying on that ring hilt. Exactly. One of the considerations with a ring hilt fetter is most folks like to fight with spez heavies for their hand protection. And what we've noticed is that it does limit your hand position for some grips, such as like a thumb grip, for example. So when you transition grips in your with the sword, you often want to be able to manipulate. And one of the most common ones you'll see is using your thumb here to push and twist to the side so you're able to use your uh, false edge or even your true edge just in some varied positions. 
if you have super bulky gloves with giant monster thumbs, even though a lot of makers will make these giant rings to try and help facilitate that, sometimes it just doesn't happen. Sometimes you're just not able to stick your thumb in there physically. If you already have all your equipment, you've got your, you know, your old trusted Spes heavies, they're right? They're broken in, they're soft, you're comfortable with them. Yeah, you don't want to spend a, another couple hundred bucks on a brand new, new pair, pair of gloves, gloves just, just, to just to have the yeah. thumb grip on your new ring hilt fader. Yes. That is a consideration if that's what you already have, right? So I think that's, that's once again, it's a consideration you have to make, which yes. would make it a con, but there are ways around there that. workarounds, yeah, for sure. And different, different manufacturers or different sword makers will have different diameters and different sizes for those rings. I know that I think Siggy has developed their ring to actually like accommodate a Spez Heavy, but for something like this, which is a Regenier, it doesn't fit the Spez Heavy thumb under it. But again, those are just considerations. And if you're talking about those considerations being made of like, oh, well, the rings are bigger to accommodate the Spes Heavy, suddenly now you're starting to mess with the balance. The a balance, bit. which is, again, another consideration, whether it's a pro or a con is maybe up to your personal decision. But I think when you have all this extra weight here at the front, some folks might find that it changes the balance of the sword. However, a really well-made fetter, if it's actually designed to incorporate those rings, it should be well balanced. But if you just take any old fetter and slap some rings on it, it totally changes it and it might not actually feel super good. It's, it's kind of a back and forth and it's one of the unfortunate realities about seeing a cool new sword online and then just ordering it yeah. with the blind faith that yours is going to handle nicely. Yes. And not actually, you know, going to a storefront and being able to yeah. feel and try them around so that it can be a bit of a gamble so that you definitely have to start trying to find other people's experiences with that particular setup and seeing what they think about it and deciding if that would work out for you as well. For sure. And of course, when you have a double ring like this one, it ends up balancing that weight on either side. If you go with a single ring and it just has the ring on one side instead of the other, that'll also change the balance and the handling of the sword, in which case then you might wanna see if that's good for your style of fencing. A thing to note is that these ring hilt fetters actually have a little bit of controversy. There are some tournaments that might not actually consider them legal for various reasons, which we will cover, but you do have to consider that when you're buying something from a competitive standpoint. So make sure when you're going to a tournament, if you have bought one of these types of swords, that the tournament will actually let you use it based on their rules. Some of the logic that these tournaments have in terms of legalizing these or not comes from the idea that it could be considered an unfair advantage. If you have a competitor with a ring hilt sword versus one without, the person with the ring hilt sword is obviously not going to get hit in the hands as much, right? So then from a rule standpoint, where does that leave you? you? You could very well make the argument that the person with the ring hilt just has a distinct advantage that the other person mm -hmm. does not. And how do you try to balance that, right? Do you adjust that in the rules? Do you adjust that in like, just what do you allow in the tournament? Yep. As we just talked about it, you know, that that is something to consider from both a tournament organizer standpoint, but as well as a participant, how, yes. how do you want to handle that? Mm -hmm. And there is no real black and white answer for that, I think. It, yeah, there's a lot of ways that you could go about that, right? I mean, it does have an advantage, whether that's considered an unfair advantage or not, as from an organizing perspective, yeah, I want to see how can I make this as standardized as possible to get the most fair rule set as possible. But then you start getting into the weeds of trying to regulate the length, the weight, all of those other things. Um, so again, that's kind of the beauty of the HEMA community is that every tournament has its own rules. You can kind of play in different playgrounds and get a feel for what you like. But again, when you're looking at these swords, just read the rules and make sure that it is something that is legal within your region. Keeping in the vein of tournaments, there's one more other factor. Uh, Brittany, I believe you're somewhat well known for grappling people sometimes, me? right? Me? Oh, no, no not me. I would never, I would never do that. No, Are we once. referring to that one time? I, I don't know, was that that one time or was it that one other, other time? Oh, I was thinking of the one time that I almost got DQ'd, but maybe not that time. Oh. Never mind. Okay. Grappling. This is one of those things that tournaments get very hung up on just generally, but when it comes to ring hilt fetters, that's where they get really nervous because everybody's worried that as the fetter falls in a grapple, 
it can't lay flat. Whereas when you have a normal fetter, amazing. Wow. <laughs> it lays flat. Whereas if you look at the ring hilt, there's this ring that sticks up. If somebody was to drop this and fall, the concern is that it's not something flat to fall on and it can then be very dangerous to, you know, the body of the person falling. Of course, this is a reasonable consideration from an organizer's perspective. They have so many things to consider in terms of liability and insurance, keeping people safe. So again, read the rules, make sure that it is actually a legal fetter in the tournament that you are fencing in. And also just when you get into a grapple, be safe and be thoughtful of where the swords are at all times. Now, when it comes to an overall pros and cons list, we left the best for last. We have one more that we feel is probably the most important factor out of any of these. Absolutely. Any fencer, absolutely, it needs to have this consideration. It is something that can't be overlooked. It's very serious. And really, that just comes down to it looks freaking cool. It looks so good. So good, bud. Like, oh, yeah. having the ring hilt on it, it adds this, like, flair of just, like, fancy yeah <laughs> like some so of, fancy. some of them also you get some twisty cross guards you can get some twisty ring hilts in there too and it it, it just adds that level of exuberance yeah. going this is not just a tool this is my tool and yeah. it looks good it looks doing good it. yep that is absolutely the most important consideration hopefully you guys found this video helpful and it gives you some information to make an informed decision on your fetter purchase. If you're enjoying the content, please consider joining me on Patreon, where you can get bonus and exclusive content. Thank you to my patrons Hannah, Jordan, and Alex.